the G-bombs is that acronym I made up. The, the G-bomb stands for greens and beans and onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds, right? Those particular nutrients are those particular foods that I want you to eat each day because each one of these foods individually has properties that powerfully protect against cancer. So each one of them is shown when you eat them, it reduces risk of cancer by more than 50%. But what if we put together a diet style with a full portfolio of all those foods that protect against cancer and we try to eat all those cancer protective foods in our dietary portfolio? Then the effects is that they work synergistically to wipe out cancer and to protect your body and your brain. These foods are powerfully protective against cancer powerfully protective, right? The onions and the garlic and the berries and the green vegetables because they inhibit tumors from growing. You know, they're natural angiogenesis inhibitors. Here's my G-bomb slide. Let's go over some of these foods individually in a little more depth for a few minutes, quickly but a little more depth because the most protective compounds against cancer are the ITCs that come from green vegetables. And here's what you have to remember about these ITCs that come from the green cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale and cabbage and watercress and mustard greens and turnip greens and collard greens. The most important thing you have to remember is that the ITCs are not in the vegetables. Did you get that? They're not there yet. They're formed as you chew the vegetable. They're formed in your mouth as you chew. So you have to remember this because you have to chew them real well to form the ITCs. If you don't chew real well, you don't, and you swallow them whole, you eat rapidly, that's right, you could blend them or you, or you could juice them to get them, but you see the cell wall of the plant cell contains an enzyme called myrosinase in the cell wall. And as you chew it, you release the packet that holds the myrosinase, and the myrosinase now can mix, it, mix in with the glucosinolate in the center of the cell, forming the ITCs as you're chewing. And the myrosinase is heat sensitive. So if you overcooked the broccoli or the kale, you would have destroyed all the myrosinase enzymes. So now when you chew the broccoli, you're not going to form many anti-cancer ITCs. Hence, the reason why you're eating a salad every day and putting some of that raw cabbage and raw kale and watercress and arugula on, on the salad, right? While you're chopping up some fine arugula on top of that salad, taking the time to shred some cabbage and put some cruciferous on there and to chew that salad really well. Now, even though these studies have been shown to reduce risk of cancer and prevent cancer deaths, even in women who have cancer, these cruciferous vegetables, I want you to recognize that if you're taking that vegetable, right, you're taking that broccoli, let's say, and you walk it for three or four minutes, it's still al dente, it's still a little hard, and then you can put a nice delicious sauce on it, you're still gonna get a lot of anti-cancer effects as opposed to cooking it for 10 or 15 minutes till it's like mush. You following this? You can still eat your broccoli cooked, but it has to be cooked, it has to be a little undercooked, not overcooked, it's very important. If you're cooking the green vegetables in a soup, if I'm making an anti-cancer soup and I'm putting mustard greens or turnip greens or collard greens into that soup, here's what I'll do. I'll take my raw kale and collards and mustard greens and my onion, by the way, and I'll blend it in the Vitamix to a puree causing that, that chemical reaction to occur in the Vitamix. Maybe I'll ladle just a little bit of soup liquid in there, just a little bit of liquid in there to get it to blend okay. Not too much liquid, I don't want to dilute the chemical effects but I'm gonna blend it while it's raw. You know when you cut the onion, it, goes, it, gets, it causes the sulfenic acid, it burns your eyes, well you're causing the chemical reaction that's forming the anti-cancer compounds. If you put the whole onion in the soup and then cooked it and then blended it, it wouldn't burn your eyes, but you wouldn't form any anti-cancer compounds as well. You have to do it while it's still raw to form the compounds, so they're there. Now you can pour it into the soup to be cooked with the rest of the food because the cooking won't destroy the anti-cancer compounds once they were formed, but it would have prevented their forma formation had you not blended it first. Are you following me right now? So it's not just eating the right food, it's also knowing the right way to prepare the food so you maintain those nutrients, so you keep those nutrients intact. So yes, these are powerfully protective against cancer. These cruciferous vegetables. And like the myrosinase enzyme, 
in the green vegetables, the onions and the scallions have that alienase enzyme. Notice the two L's and the two I's, alienase, the only food with two L's, the only, of course, word with two L's and two I's. That's why it's good for Scrabble, too. But these have very powerful beneficial effects. I know I underestimated the anti-cancer effects of onions and scallions when I was growing up. I was, from year, even like 20 years ago, I didn't even like onions and scallions that much. I didn't know how, how beneficial they were to prevent cancer until I learned more about it, and then I would start eating them more. And what's really weird is that over the years when I learned how protective they were against cancer and started eating them more, now I love them. I developed a taste for them. Now when I make my kale dish, right, when I make my California cream kale with a cashew hemp sauce and a little drizzle a little tomato sauce on top, I'll put some raw onion on top of that and mix it to get the crunch. I'll put some scallions on top of that. I want to put like raw scallions on top of my soup and, you know, I, I like that little crunchy raw flavor to mix it in a whole bunch of ways that I never would have think I would have liked years ago because you develop a taste for what you get used to eating, number one. When you eat, get really healthy, your taste buds get stronger. And when you intellectually know the food is good for you, it helps you enjoy it more too. All these factors play a role. So it lowers blood sugar, it lowers blood pressure, it lowers cholesterol, and onions have anti-inflammatory effects. And they too have anti angiogenic effects and make you promote weight loss, get you the fat off your body. Fat is an enemy because here I am with low levels of body fat, right, with a ripped stomach, and then if I gain 10 pounds, now instead of requiring three units of insulin to deal with that lunch I just ate, because I gained weight, the fat inhibits the uptake of insulin, and now instead of requiring my, body, my pancreas to produce three units, my pancreas has to produce 10 units of insulin because I have 10 pounds of fat on me now. Did you follow that? If I gained 50 pounds, maybe my body after that meal might have to produce 10 times the amount of insulin it would have needed had I been that original ideal weight. When you're fat, there's no such thing as a healthy fat person. When you're fat, you're unhealthy. Period. Because you can't be, have hormonal favorability when you're overweight. And you can't, and you have to have been overeating calories when you're fat. Now the fat person, the person who's overweight, is the healthiest person genetically. Why would I say that? Well look, because it's a wide bell, a wide bell shaped curve. People live, you know, the average American, let's say, lives to be about 76 years old, but a wide bell. Some die at 50, some die at 90, but it's a wide shape. They all buy, you know, for every person dies at 80, one dies at 65. In other words, they're all over the place dying with the luck, luck of the draw, right? People dying all over the place at every kind of age. But when you're a neutritarian, the bell narrows. So now everybody lives around 100 years old, but this bell means that the people in bad health, the people who are genetically weaker, maybe live to be 95, 96, 97, genetically stronger, 103, 104, 105, but you're, you're all living between 95 and 110 years old or 105 years old. You follow me? It's a narrow bell, but you're all living around 100 years old. Do you follow that? But the person who lives to be 107 or 110 years old, those are people who naturally have even slower metabolic rates. Thrust those people who are naturally going to survive years ago, 130,000 years ago, they would have survived on less food because most of the human history, people had trouble surviving because they couldn't find enough food. So genetics selected out, selected out for people to get them to live so they could get by on less food. So this person who has a naturally slow metabolic rate, living their genetics living 10,000 years ago, had increased risk of survival because they have slower metabolic rate. You, now you thrust that person into American environment with all the caloric excess, all the fast food and the processed foods and the animal products and the sandwiches and the, you know, right? So we have this person now on the American diet and they become overweight with the shortest lifespan of anybody. But put them back 10,000 years ago, they would have had the longest lifespan of anybody. But put them back eating right, and because their metabolic rate is slower, and they can be satisfied with less calories because they're not going to become too thin as they eat less, those are going to be the people who have the, the propensity, the ability to live to be 110 years old. Did you follow that one? The people of a natural tendency to be overweight, those are the super healthy people. The super healthy people, had they been eaten right. They've just taken away that opportunity for health because the American diet is so addicting and so disease-promoting, and their weak, their genetics makes them at increased risk from the damage from the American diet. You understanding this now? It's giving you more thorough understanding of the concepts, helping you with these factors that to prevent cancer and to control your health destiny and giving you the superpowers you need to help people. 
because you have to become the nutritional expert. Nobody's going to listen to you if you don't develop some degree of expertise and knowledge. You have to really know what you're talking about. And I'm so excited you're here and listening and taking notes and asking me questions because that's my goal. To, it's, like, it's like a cram PhD course, right? And I hope you take it further from this one lecture. You know, read the books and review the data and go through the studies and really become facile and really be able to articulate this information. So mushrooms are an integral part of the human immune system. They're a natural part of our defenses against cancer. And they're rich in angiogenesis inhibitors, which you know what those are now for sure. And you know what aromatase inhibitors are? I mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. Like tamoxifen is an aromatase inhibitor. It's a drug that lowers estrogen because the estrogens are not just produced by the ovaries. Estrogens are produced by fat cells. And the fatter you get, the more fat on your body, the more estrogen circulating, the higher risk of breast cancer. And the fatter you get, the more estrogen is circulating in men and the higher the risk of prostate cancer because excess estrogen increases risk of prostate cancer in the male and breast cancer in the female. But mushrooms don't let that happen. Keeps you thinner, you eat right, and they prevent estrogen from stimulating the breast and the prostate because they lower estrogen production from fat tissue and they protect estrogen stimulation to breast tissue. And there's also antigen binding lectins that help the immune system work better and remove and identify abnormal cells so the immune system can attack and remove abnormal cells before they be can become cancerous. Mushrooms mesh in there. What I'm saying right now is that for the human being to have a maximally functioning immune system, it has to be exposed to the nutrients in onions and mushrooms and green vegetables and these seeds, which are, you know, if you lived, if you lived in the olden times and you were looking for foods in the jungle or the woods, you'd be eating these foods. You'd be eating these wild onions in the ground. You'd be eating these green levy vegetables. You know what's really weird is now that I learn more about this stuff, I've actually learned how to eat out of the woods behind my house. I live in New Jersey. There's a, a preserve behind my house where it's like a park where people can't build on with like walking trails and bike trails. I go in the woods and I'm able to find so much food in there now that I know how to recognize it. I could actually go out there and eat, a, eat a, you know what I mean? So there's so much natural food, but the food that's there is mostly the cruciferous vegetables, the onions, the seeds, the little pine nuts on the pine trees, and little tiny berries, all these things that are very powerfully anti-cancer foods are right there in our natural environment. Berries! I just are, are powerfully protective against cancer. They're a natural food for humans. They're all over the place around the world in areas that humans are going to inhabit. And they're small and colorful. They're rich in polyphenols and anthocyanins. And they have anti-diabetic effects even though they contain sugar. They have anti-diabetic effects. They lower blood sugar and they keep insulin secretion low. It's amazing. They're a magic food. They've actually been shown to reverse cancers, to promote the reversal of shrink tumors, prevent new, DNA, prevent new tumor development, to reverse DNA damage in rats, and in human studies, too, to reverse precancerous lesions. Berries are another superfood, and that's where the second B in G-bombs stands for them, and they protect the brain against aging as well. And don't forget the seeds, because these flax seeds and chia seeds and even sesame seeds contain lignans. How many of you eat a tablespoon of flax seeds or chia seeds a day. Wow, that's fantastic. Very powerful. What if all of America did that? What if all of America had a big salad every day, like what we're talking about? What if all of America had their tables, had some mushrooms or onions every day, and had, and had a, their tablespoon of flax seeds every day? We would change the healthcare crisis overnight, right? We it would be such a we healthcare costs would drop by by eighty percent these lignans fight cancer, and here's the study showing that the people who were eating the three, one third of a milligram of lignin a day had a 71 risk reduction from cancer and can increase cancer survival, but keep in mind that this was after they got cancer. If they did it before they got cancer, it would have been much more protective, number one, and number two, they're only taking a third of a milligram a day when a teaspoon of flaxseed has seven milligrams, a tablespoon has over 21 milligrams. We take in 20 mill milligrams, not a third of one milligram, then you're really going to see maximum protection. And when you do the whole portfolio, not just with the flax seeds with an American diet, but with the flax seeds with a diet that's a, a diet of nutritional excellence with all the other synergistic foods that prevent cancer. This is where the money's at. We have the information right now to win the war on cancer. Let's do it.
right? Don't you guys say it? Let's, let's, come on, let's do it. You ready? Let's do it. Why not? Right? Now, before we wrap this up, Seventh-day Adventist studies, just to make clear here, that the vegans who did not eat any nuts and seeds, the low-fat vegans, don't live as long because they're not absorbing the phytochemicals and antioxidants well. And there's beneficial effects in the fats that protect the brain. And vegans are at risk of increased risk of depression and dementia if they're DHA deficient from lack of fatty acids in the brain. So we have to be careful with that. So even the non-vegans, even the flexitarians who ate some animal products, who ate nuts and seeds, lived longer on the whole than the low-fat vegans did. And of course, the pyramid we're talking about here is a diet where vegetables are at the base, where you're eating beans and whole grains and nuts and seeds, but a lot of these low-calorie vegetables, because the more greens and beans and nuts and seeds, because we want to eat lots of greens, beans, and nuts and seeds because they're low glycemic effects. And it makes your diet overall low glycemic. It's a low glycemic plant favorable diet, right? So you get a the, the dramatic lowering of the a glycemic load of the diet and dramatic anti-diabetic and cardiovascular benefits. And then we use spices like turmeric, you know, with a little bit of like, we added turmeric, I make a great salad dressing. I made a great Thai peanut sauce the other day for a cooked vegetable dish just by taking a little curry, a little turmeric, mixed with some little peanuts and a little hemp seeds, blended with a couple of dates and a squeeze of lemon. And the secret ingredient was some lemongrass paste to make the flavor of the, the Thai flavoring in there. Mix that together in the Vitamix. Walk the vegetables with the snow pea pods, the broccoli, the Chinese cabbage, and the mushrooms for about four minutes of walking. Put the sauce on it, cooked it for two minutes more. Six minutes in cooking all together. Total of six or seven minutes, have the dish finished. Incredibly delicious meal with a delicious sauce on top. But the turmeric has anti-cancer effects. The spices also have the anti-cancer effects, right? And the hemp seeds and the added to it as well. And a little bit of, and of also the, the curcumins from the turmeric and green tea extracts, the, these polyphenols from the greens also have beneficial anti-cancer effects. One of these studies on this new test we have available, we have these new tests that are called liquid biopsies, which means you take a blood test and you can tell if a person has cancer by the amount of DNA defects in their blood test. And we find that when you have a high level, you have cancer. When we have a low level of DNA defects, you don't have cancer. But what I'm saying here now is when we take people with high levels of DNA defects who have some hidden occult cancer, they can't even find out where it is. It's not even visible yet. Not bef a stage before it's diagnosable with a mammogram or colonoscopy, right, or a biopsy. It's not visible, but there's some early cancer cells that are going to appear five or ten years from now because you have cancer right now in your body. We can detect it with these blood tests. But here's the point that at these early stages, we give people the turmeric and the green tea and the high di nutrient diet, and 94% of them were able to reverse these early stage cancers. You're catching cancers at a stage where it's reversible, but the point is it's reversible. The point is that early stage cancers are reversible. When's the time to start eating right? Now, right. When's the time to stop smoking or stop snorting cocaine? It was back then. What's so funny? What's the difference between doing that and eating the hamburgers and the fried foods? No difference. People are out there right now in the restaurant committing suicide with cancer-causing foods. But here's the point. People's diseases get worse, and it's, it's a miracle. It's superpowers. I want you to have the same. I want you to feel the, feel the incredible pleasure or satisfaction from people getting well, saving people's lives, that we all have to do this together. We have an army of people saving people's lives. Every teacher, every nurse, every lawyer, every doctor, every person in the media, every athlete, I don't care what you are, you can be, uh, have a role to play in helping change America and get America healthy because we all play our, can play our part. Be courageous. Don't be a chicken. Don't be a coward. Don't hide what you know. Don't go along with the people that are giving donuts to soccer games. Open your mouth up. Don't be at a party where you're going along with people because you don't want to be embarrassed. Just bring them a healthy dish and explain why you're bringing a healthy dish. Take charge. Be proud of what you do. Be courageous. Don't worry about... Be, have have self-esteem. Have self-esteem. Don't People with low self-esteem got to fit in. and don't want to like, make sure they fit in. Nobody's looking at them. and They want to be looked at that scene as being different. Be courageous. I'm giving you a superpowers. You take every opportunity to change your life. 
Because maybe you'll be seen as being different, but maybe somebody will ask you more and learn more about it. Maybe you'll save their life. Take a chance to save people's lives. Most people will still get cancer, but it doesn't have to be you. You don't have to have it happen to you. No heart attacks, no strokes, no dementia, no cancers. Let's do it.